today I want to talk to you about food chains and um, show you a few signs of food chains that I found around my house and my yard and my local duck pond. And then I want to show you a little craft that you can do um, to create an actual food chain um, <clears throat> based on some animals that you have seen. I'll show you a couple of different ways that you can make a food chain for yourself. So when I was looking for food chains, I went outside in my backyard and spent some time looking around for living things. And I just observed very carefully, looking for plants and animals. When I spotted animals, I started thinking about what they eat and what eats them. So anytime you see something living, it's part of a food chain. What kind of food is this lizard looking for? What do you think it eats? Also, who are its predators? What kind of animal thinks this lizard would make a good snack or a good meal? So our dog has been alerting us to the fact that there is a little critter outside our back door at night. And it's this little toad. So I was watching the toad and wondering what it eats. Toads and frogs like to eat insects. I'm trying to get it away from the door so the dog will leave it alone. And I started wondering what eats toads? Snakes and hawks, raccoons maybe. So it has to look out for those larger predators that might eat it. And I noticed it's a little camouflaged so that it can hide from those predators. On our front porch, I noticed some wasps flying around. Um, I wonder what kind of food they're looking for. Are they eating nectar, drinking nectar from the plants? And what eats a wasp? What's brave enough to eat a wasp? So what do ducks eat? They eat a lot of different things. They eat small fish and fish eggs, snails, worms, slugs, mollusks, those are basically snails, um, small crustaceans like crawfish. They also eat plants. They eat grass, leaves, and weeds. They eat algae in the water. They eat aquatic plants and roots. They eat frogs even, tadpoles salamanders and other amphibians, also seeds and grains. People like to feed them some seeds and grains when they feed them bread. What do turtles eat? The turtle food chain includes worms, small insects, snails, and fish. That's what turtles like to eat. Um, they're mainly carnivorous in the wild, meaning they eat meat because they need protein to grow. Um, and they don't have to worry too much about getting eaten. They have those nice, hard, protective shells that help them to hide from predators. Um, so they don't have to worry about that too much, but the babies do need to worry about predators. The little baby turtles might get eaten by raccoons, skunks, foxes, even wading birds, and storks. So you'll need some construction paper or plain white paper, either or. I'm gonna use construction paper because I have it. Um, yellow will definitely come in handy. We have a specific purpose for yellow and we have a specific purpose for green and then just a variety of some other colors. If you don't have construction paper or um, like different colors of paper, you could just you know make it work with notebook paper and just use some crayons to color in some different parts of your chain. Also scissors, um, tape would be better um, and quicker. If you have glue, you could use glue, but then you're just gonna have to be patient and wait for the glue to dry. What I'm going to do next is take my green and yellow paper and I'm just going to cut some strips. Um, we're gonna just make an old fashioned paper chain. If you've ever done that before, where we connect the links together. And I'm not gonna try to be super precise with my strips, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. No need to measure. So as long as they're about the same width across, mine are about an inch across. So I, I wanna make sure I have some green and some yellow. Um, yellow is gonna be for the sun. You'll just need one, one piece, one yellow piece for each food chain that you make. One green piece, because that's gonna be your plant in your food chain. Um, so you really, might, if you're just making one, you'll just need one yellow, one green, and then a variety of other colors. Um, any colors you want, any colors you have to create your other animals in your food chain. 
and you'll just need one color for each different animal that your food chain has. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I've got three sheets of paper here just to make it a little quicker. I'm gonna get a few more colors here in case I need them. For my food chain, I'll have <clears throat> yellow for the sun, green for my plant, I'll have red for one animal, pink for another animal, brown, I have a couple shades of blue. We'll see how long my food chain needs to be. Okay, so in thinking about my um, backyard food chain, I wanted to write down my food chain just to help um, organize myself when I wanna create my paper chain. So I wrote it like this, the sun with an arrow to the grass. And this is how we read it. The sun gives energy to the grass. The grass gives energy to a cricket. The cricket gives energy to a toad. The toad gives energy to a snake, and the snake gives energy to a hawk. So um, obviously I've seen in my backyard the sun, the grass, um, crickets, grasshoppers, those types of animals. Definitely saw a toad, so that's kind of where my thinking was centered around the toad. Snake and hawk are kind of in my imagination, but it's, it's a logical food chain that probably does exist nearby. And then I drew it, I drew the animals um, like this. So here's my food chain again. The sun gives energy to the grass, which gives energy to the cricket, which gives energy to the toad, which gives energy to the snake, which gives energy to the hawk. And they all depend on each other. So if one part is missing, if my toads all disappear, then my crickets are happy. Uh, my crickets are gonna like, be in a, they're gonna multiply. There's gonna be lots and lots of crickets. Um, so they'll be happy. They might eat all the grass and then we'll have a problem. Um, and then the snakes will have a problem because they will lose their food supply. So they'll go hungry and suffer. Um, and we also know that it's not just a food chain. It isn't just a straight line. Snakes eat more types of animals than just toads. They eat lots of different things. Um, so we know that they can find other food to eat, but we know that if the toads are all taken away by some disease or hunting, over hunting or something like that, um, it does have effects on the whole food chain. So based on this food chain, I'm going to use my paper chain, my paper rectangles, and just label them. So on my yellow strip, I'm gonna write sun. If you wanna draw a little picture, you can. I'm just gonna keep it simple. Um, green is for my plant. So in this food chain, it's grass. It could have been tree or shrub, flower, rosebush, but I just did grass. And then I'm just gonna use my other colors for my other one, two, three, four animals. So I just need four colors, doesn't matter, color. I'm gonna use these colors. And I'm just gonna label them. This one's gonna be cricket. These colors don't really mean anything. They don't symbolize anything. It's just random. I'm just gonna use my tape. Tape is quick, I don't have to wait for it to dry. And I'm just gonna make a loop of my sun. Closed. Get another piece of tape ready. I'm gonna attach my grass. I want the word to be on the outside, so make sure that your writing isn't on the inside, but it's on the outside so you can read it. Take that down. Um, after grass, I need to find cricket. Because grass gives energy to the cricket. And then I can make my cricket link in the chain. Cricket gives energy to the toad. Make sure the word's on the outside. The toad gives energy to my snake. Make sure the word's on the outside. And at the top of my food chain is my hawk. That thing's gonna eat the hawk. The hawk dies of old age. It, it'll decompose. Um, decomposers will break down the hawk and return it to the soil and the nutrients from the hawk and make it good soil for plants to grow. The sun and the nutrients in the soil will help the plants to grow. And then plants will grow to give energy to the small animals and the small animals will give energy to larger animals. Um, I hope you have fun making a food chain. Maybe you can make more than one based on animals that you see around your house. And um, just keep looking in nature for animals and remember that animals don't exist by themselves. They're interdependent. They're de they depend on each other for their food and um, it all creates a delicate balance in nature.